In this video, we're going to learn about generics in C Sharp. This is an extremely powerful feature, so you can build a specific class and make it work with any type. For example, I use generics extensively when making the grid system so that each grid position can hold whatever custom data you want. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So generics are a great feature of C-Sharp in order to help you write more generic code that can be used in many scenarios. What they allow you to do is write your class or functions in a way that you don't specifically define any particular type. So then when you use that class or function, you can pass in what type you want it to work with. You can define an entire class or interface as a generic or just a single method or delegate. Now, you might have never heard the word generics, but if you've written some code, then chances are you've used them. If you've ever used a list, then you've probably used a generic. When you define a list, you also define it with the type of elements that will go inside of that list. That's the generic parameter. You can make a list of any type you want. Another example is when I made the grid system in a previous video, I also made it work with generics meaning that that system can hold whatever type you want in each grid position. Yet another example is the video where I covered handling events in Unity Dots. In the end, I showed a nice class I built, which uses generics in order to be usable in any scenario. So first you define the event component with all of the data that you need, and you pass that in as the generic type. By doing so, you can use the same generic class while having it be customized to the particular event you're trying to capture. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Alright, so let's look at how generics work. Okay, here we are in an empty script. Let's start off simple and just make a function. So we're going to make a function that takes two elements and simply returns an array containing those elements. So let's write it out. So we make it private. And now for the return type, let's make it return an int array. And we're going to receive an int for the first element and also an int for the second element. And inside, all we're going to do is return a new int array holding both of our elements. Here it is, very basic. And now up here, we can call our create array function and we pass in our two nice ints. All right, so here it is, very basic. Let's test. And yep, there we have our log. So we have two elements, first a five and then a six. Okay, so here we wrote this function in order to solve a specific problem and it works great. However, now let's say that we need to solve the exact same problem, but this time we wanted to use strings. So naturally we cannot do create array and then pass in a string and then another string. Here, obviously we have errors. So what we can do is duplicate our code and make another function, but this one that works with strings. So just like that. Now this would work, but you can already see the issue. If we keep doing this, then eventually we're going to need to make a new function every time we want to use it on a different type. So this is where generics come in. With generics, we can write the function just once and make it work on any type. So let's remove this one. And now on this create array function, Instead of hard coding the int type, what we're going to do is after the function name, we open and close using the greater and less than symbols. And now inside we write the name of our generic type. Usually the standard is just to write T. What we're saying is that when we call this function, we're going to pass in the type and that type will be used wherever T is used. So in our return type, instead of returning an array of ints, we're going to return an array of T. And the first element will be of type T and the second element also of type T. So instead of working with ints, now we're working with this generic type. And now up here on our function, we're going to call and we're going to pass in the type. In this case, it's an int. And over here, we pass in with a string. And just like that, now this is working exactly the same as previously. So we can add some logs just to verify. And yep, here it is. The first array is all working correctly. And you can see that it's of type int32 array. And the second one using the same function is of type string array. So now we have just one function declaration and we're making it work with two different types. 
And also here the compiler is smart enough in order to infer the type. So for example, here we can actually omit the type definition and there you go. He's smart enough in order to understand that this is working with ints. And over here we remove this and we can see that indeed it's smart enough to see that it's working with strings. So now here, if I say that I want to create an array and use the generic of type ints, then I pass in a five for the first parameter and then a string on the second parameter. Over here, yep, you can see that we have a nice error. So it's telling us that the type does not match. We cannot implicitly convert string onto an int since this function is now expecting an int for the second element. So by using generics, instead of hard coding our type into our function, we made it work with any type. Now, instead of having just one version to work with ints, then one with floats, one with strings, and so on, all we need is just this one, and it works in all scenarios. Now, one note here, the standard is to use the name T for your generic type, but this can really be any name you want. So you could, for example, say my custom name. And just like this here, we have valid code that does exactly the same thing. But normally, you should really stick with the standard. And if you want a more custom name than just T, you can at least make it start with T. So for example, T my custom type. Now what you can do is also define multiple generic types. So you do T1, then a comma, then T2, and as many as you want. So here we're defining two different types, then one field receiving of type T1 and one field of receiving of type T2. So we can test it up here, test multi-generics. Let's say that the first one is an int and the second one is a string. So yep, just like that. And yep, everything works. The first element is of type int32 and the second one is a string. Now, one use case of generics that you've seen me use before and that I covered in the delegates video is the action and func delegates. So they are inside using system. And you have a action and you have a func. Now we can inspect the definition. So you can see that the normal action is just a basic delegate with no parameters. However, over here you can see that you have a whole bunch of versions that use a lot of different generics. So here is one example of an action that takes two different types of two different parameters. And you can see that you have versions with tons of parameters. And again, you can see that they match the standard naming convention of T1, T2, T3, and so on. Now the other one is over here, the func, and you can see that it takes at least one type for the parameter, which is the result. So if we inspect, we can see that it's a delegate which returns t result, which is the type that we define it in here. Then again, we have tons more versions that define the number of parameters and the type of our result. So you see that you can also use generics when working with delegates, which is what these two are doing. So you can make your own delegate and make it work with a T1 and a T2, just like that. So over here we have defined exactly the same thing that we have in our action. And then the func over here is pretty much the same as this. Just like this. So we define a type of T result, that's what we return, and then a T1 for our single parameter. If you want to learn more about delegates, check the video linked in the description. So over here, we already covered using generics with functions and with delegates. Now we can also use them when writing an entire class. So in here we can make my class. And again, we define a generic. So we're defining the class and making it work with a generic type. And now here we can use that type anywhere in our class. For example, of type T and let's call it value. So now up here, we can create an instance of my class. Let's say we want to home ints and we make a new my class. And then if we access my class and try to see our value field, and yep, you can see that it does indeed have a field, in this case of type int. And now within our class, we can use the type T on any functions or fields or anything we want. So for example, we can use this exact same function that we used up here. And now on this function, we do not need to define the generic. By default, it already knows that the T is going to be the T that is defined when we instantiate the class. Now, another thing we can do is also add constraints onto our generics. So for example, let's say we have an interface. So 
So here we have a simple I enemy interface and just has a damage method. And now here in our class, we can receive a generic of type T and then we can add a constraint in order to ensure that whatever type we use for T, it must implement I enemy. So we do my class where T implements I enemy. And now since T will have to implement I enemy, that means we can use the functions defined in the interface by directly accessing our T. So for example, here we can make a my class constructor. We're going to receive a T for our value. And then we can go into the value since it's of type T, which implements I enemy, and we can call damage. So yep, here we have some valid code. And now up here, if we're trying to create an instance of our class using an int, you can see that we have an error since our int parameter does not implement the I enemy interface. But now we can make a class that does implement that. So now here we have two separate classes that both of them implement I enemy. And now we can use any of these all the way up here on our my class as our generic type, just like this. So I can make a my class of type enemy minion, then I can also make one of type enemy archer, since both of the types actually implement the I enemy interface. So just like that. And if we run this, we can see that it will indeed call the damage function on the interface which we'll call this one and then this one. And yep, there it is. We have enemy minion damage and enemy archer damage. Now there are a bunch more constraints that we can add to our generic type. You can check the page in the official docs for all of them. For example, you can see where T is struct in order to ensure that T must be struct. You can also do class in order to ensure that it must be a class. Then you have new. This ensures that T must have a parameterless constructor. Then you can also combine constraints. So over here, what we're saying is that type T must be a class. It must implement I enemy and it must have a parameterless constructor. So with constraints, you can make your generics be as constrained or as free as you want. Now, lastly, you can also use generics in interfaces. So down here on our I enemy interface, we can also use a generic type. So let's say a T and then on damage, we receive a parameter of type T. And then when we implement our interfaces, we must also define the type. So we need to correctly implement the interface. Down here, let's say we need to implement I enemy that receives an int. And yep, just like this, now we don't have any errors. So now this interface works the same as any other generic types. So you can use it as a parameter, you can use it as a return value, or in this case, use it as a property. All right, so here you'll learn all about generics in C-sharp. As you can see, this is an extremely powerful feature that helps you write cleaner code with fewer dependencies. You can write one class that solves one specific problem and use generics so that it's reusable in many different scenarios. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.